Looking for some cool RV outdoor gear? Well, stick around, folks. We're going to share our very favorite outdoor gear with you. Hey everybody, Mike from RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at some of our favorite outdoor RV gear that we use with our Class A RV. Now, a lot of the gear we're gonna use, we have been testing now for quite some time. We really don't like to show products that we just bought yesterday because we don't know how they're gonna work over time. But all the products we're gonna share with you today, we've been using for thousands of miles and quite a bit of time. And uh, a few of the items I think you're really going to be interested in, especially towards the end of the video. So make sure you stick around to check those out. But let's get started with our review of all the cool stuff that we use on the outside of our RV. Now, one of my most favorite items to use outside is kind of a kind of a weird item, but it's this outdoor lighter. Now, the cool thing about this lighter is there's a few cool things about it. First of all, it's what's called a windproof lighter. So when you click this thing, it's like a, like a little blowtorch. You can't see it, but you can hear it. You might be able to see that flame a little bit coming out of there. But this baby is fantastic because if it's windy out, it doesn't matter. It still lights and I can light my campfire nice and easy. Plus it's bendable. So if I want to, you know, squeeze in between some charcoals and get closer to the burner or, you know, move it at a weird angle. I can do that with this. And then the other really cool part of it is you can buy these cans of butane because this is a refillable lighter. So you just pop your can of butane, shake it up a little bit, stick it in the bottom of the lighter and just hold it there for about 10 seconds or so. And then that will refill your lighter and you're all set. And on top of all that, it does have a little safety switch on here. So if you have little kids running around, it's got a little on off button. You just click it into the off position and now no one can push the trigger. So it's a fantastic tool. I'm not afraid to use it around the grandkids or any of that stuff. And it's kind of corny, but it's one of my favorite things. Now, one of my other favorite things is this table that my lighter's sitting on. Now these tables, you might've seen this before in another video that we did about the favorite things on our Class C RV. These tables are fantastic. We've had this one for, I think, three years now. We have a red one in our Class C that I know we've had it at least four years, maybe going on five. And these tables have both held up really well over time. We eat dinner on these tables sometimes when we're outside. You know, you have your lighter here. You can throw it on top or throw it underneath to store things. It's got four cup holders built in so you can put your drinks in here and it folds up into this nice little bag. It's skinny and it's like a half circle, folds right up in there and you can carry it with you wherever you go. And so even if we go to visit friends at their campsite and hang out for some cocktails, we can bring our chairs and table very easily and then we're nice and comfy no matter where we are. Now, another one of our very favorite items for outdoor is our propane fire pit. And Susan and I made the decision to switch over to a propane fire pit for a number of reasons. We used to make campfires with wood all the time, or we'd bring our secret uh, Duraflame Durafla log, put that on the bottom and then put camp wood on top of that and burn it. But we ran into a few issues with that, right? Number one, we would stink like a campfire afterwards. Our clothes would smell, our hair would smell. We'd have to take a shower or go to bed smelling like a campfire. And then our bed smells like a campfire. Um, and the other issue we had with it is when we were ready to go in, you know, we, there was always this debate, like, should we know it, throw another log on the fire or are we going to go in? And then, you know, if you throw the log on and then decide to go in, now you're just burning fresh wood for no reason. And then finally we had to douse the fire at night. And so we would always get a bucket of water, pour it on our, on our coals. But of course that just creates a ton of smoke and we would essentially smoke out the campground, just putting out our fire at night. So for all those reasons, we decided to go with a propane fire pit. We can enjoy our fire outdoors. We don't smell like smoke when we're done. We can also turn it off when we're ready so we can come out and enjoy a fire for 20 minutes or two hours. It just doesn't matter. And um, so we went with an outland fire bowl or fire pit and for a couple reasons on that as well. Number one, they have what's called a Helios burner, which basically is a circle burner. And then it's got 
some pieces in the middle also that also create a flame. So instead of just getting a fire around the perimeter, we get a nice looking fire throughout all of these lava rocks and it looks really, really great. Now the fire pit itself has all these lava rocks in here, but it does come with this cover so that when we're driving down the road, we can stow everything away, nothing falls out, none of the rocks fall out or anything and everything stays pretty clean. And then it's got this little, you know, quad system on top that you just clip into place and you can carry your grill with this little handle on top. So it's really, really convenient and it works very, very well. We've been using this for quite a while now and it's, it's worked great every time we've ever used it. Now, another really great benefit about this brand of fire pit is that you can convert it over to a low propane situation. And so what we've done, as you can see here, I've replaced the parts that would normally be here and I've added my own hose to this. And then this hose goes right to our RV because our RV has a place to plug in a propane line. So I bought a 20 foot cord and now I can run my line 20 feet away from my RV. We can sit out here nice and safe and away from the RV and it works really, really great. And I'll put all of the links down below for all the parts you need to make all this happen, to make the transition because these are meant to run off of a 20 pound or a 30 pound propane tank, much like a gas grill does. But I didn't like having that propane tank sitting around. I thought it was unsightly and I don't wanna to have to carry extra propane tanks. And my rig has a place where I can plug right in. So this is really the perfect option for us. And again, not all fire pits are easily adaptable uh, to the low pressure propane system on your rig, but the Outlander are. So these will work for you. And it's really quite simple. I mean, you just turn it on, there you go. It lights right up. And we're doing this during the daytime, so I'm not sure how great it'll show up, but you get a really nice fire out of here. It's very nice and warm as well when you're sitting around it. And the longer you sit in front of it, the hotter these rocks get and the warmer your fire gets. And so it really becomes a perfect alternative to a wood fire. Now, my next favorite item on the list is also related to propane, and that is our Weber grill. And this baby is completely awesome. We can cook on here. We can smoke on this grill. Um, we even just got a pizza stone so we can make pizzas on the grill. We haven't used the pizza stone long enough to show it yet, but that will be in a future video, I can assure you, because you guys know I love pizza. But this grill is fantastic. Now, this is the Weber Q1200 grill. And I'm saying that because not all grills are adaptable to a low pressure propane that comes out of your rig. But that same 20 foot hose that I use to, to uh, light up the uh, campfire, I also use for the grill. And this is just tremendous. I don't have to mess around with propane tanks and all that stuff. There is a little bit, a few pieces that you have to buy to adapt the grill so it will connect to your RV. And I'll throw those in the links down below too. Um, and not all grills will convert. I, I wasted my money. I think I spent 160 bucks on another grill and I just couldn't get it to work with my RV propane system. So the Weber Q1200 is one of the grills that you can convert. And so I highly recommend it because it just cooks great. Now you've probably seen this grill before around the campground at lots of different campsites because this is a very, very popular grill or they have other models that look like this model. And so I'm sure everybody's seen the Weber grills around, but they cook really, really great. We just made some ribs on here last night. So I got some apple wood chips and put them in my tin foil, which creates a nice little smoke in here. And then I cooked my ribs on here, but it cooks all your food nice and evenly. Uh, pretty fast. It does just a tremendous job. It folds up really small and I'll show you how that works. These pieces just fold right in and then I keep my grill brush and I keep a little plastic scraper in here to clean the inside of the grill under the burners. You just fold it up. That's it. And it puts away nice and easy. There's nothing to it. Now I also bought a little Weber cover because when we're camping, um, you know, I don't put the grill away every night, but I do cover it every night to keep the humidity and moisture and dew off of it or certainly rain. And that way it'll last longer for us. So the grill and the cover are just a fantastic little setup. I highly recommend them. Our next favorite item outdoors for our RV is our awning screen. And this thing is tremendous. We've actually taken and doubled 
or more the amount of shade that we can enjoy outside now with our awning screen on here. And, you know, we do a lot of beach camping. We like to go to Florida in the winter and the spring, and it gets pretty warm in Florida in the springtime. So this really helps us out quite a bit. It shades our entire picnic table and seating area, and it also helps to shade the side of the RV as well so our RV doesn't get as hot inside. Now this is an awning cover that comes from Carefree Awnings, and the way it works is you can see there's a top section up there that attaches directly to your awning, and then this part just zippers right on. I mean, it's really, really simple to put it up. Now the top part stays connected to the awning all the time. It rolls up with the awning and everything. And so when it's time to take this down, I just unzip it. I can roll my awning up, fold this up. And then it, I, we also have a couple sets of anchors that we use to keep our, our screen attached and you know secured to the ground so the wind doesn't blow it up or anything like that. But it's really been tremendous for us and it's improved our outdoor quality of living tremendously. So another type of sunshade that we have, which we consider outdoor gear, is our Magna Shade that, we go, that goes on our front windshield and both of our big side windows. Now, if you guys saw our, some of our previous videos about our favorite gear, you'll know that in our Class C RV, we also had a windshield and side window cover on that vehicle. And it was tremendous because it was screened. You could see in and out of it, could lower the windows and get airflow. And the Magna Shade has all of those same benefits and more. Now the Magna Shade is fantastic. Even though it's on the outside of our RV, it really benefits us on the inside as well because one of the great things about a Magna Shade is you can't see inside the RV during the daytime. At nighttime, when the lights are on, you can see in, but during the day, we can open all of our shades and open our blinds and not have to worry about people walking by the RV and looking inside. The other really big benefit of a Magna Shade, of course, is that it cuts down on the amount of heat and sunlight that comes through the front windshield and these two big side windows. It limits UV rays, I think on ours, it's like 94%. So we are keeping a lot of heat out of our RV during the daytime so we can stay much cooler as well. And in addition to that, MagnaShade also gives you these little windshield wiper covers. And so if it's super hot in the summertime, we're not gonna have to worry as much about our windshield wipers dry rotting and not working correctly either. So Magna Shade is definitely a favorite outdoor item of ours. Now, another one of our very favorite items is our beach cart. And I just mentioned a few minutes ago, we love to do a lot of beach camping, but the beach cart works both on the beach and just in the regular campground. Now, this thing is fantastic. And you'll notice I got these big fat tires on the bottom. And when we were doing research to figure out what kind of cart we wanted to buy, I always go through and I read all of the reviews that people write. And I also read the questions and answers that people ask on Amazon so I can get a good sense of how the product works. And I learned pretty quickly that a lot of the carts that come with those skinny black wheels, the hard plastic wheels, they don't work well in the sand. They're too skinny and they sink down into the sand and you end up really pulling hard to pull your cart through the sand. So I got these big balloon tires on ours. And the whole idea here is, you know, the more space that you have on the sand with a big fat wide tire, the more likely this is to float on top of the sand and ride much easier. And this cart absolutely does that. And we load this baby down with all kinds of stuff. But let me show you how it works real quick. You just un undo this little cover, undo the zipper, and it just pops right off. Now in the side pocket of the cover, you want to hang on to that for a second. Then you've just got a little Velcro strap here that wraps around it, and that's it. You just unfold it out. It's that simple. And then this piece just goes right in here and creates a nice hard bottom for us. Now the handle on this just lifts right up and then it comes forward and there you go. You're pulling all your beach chairs, your cooler, uh, your beach bag. We have little beach tables we bring with us to the beach or we also use it around the campground. Let's say we're gonna go, I don't know, visit our friends Chris and Katrina from our everyday getaway because we end up at the same campgrounds a lot. So 
we're going to head over there and hang out for some cocktails. So we can throw a couple chairs in here, throw our cooler in here with some drinks in there and walk on over, over to our neighbors and enjoy a fun evening together or on the beach. It works like a champ. Now, I don't know about you guys, but keeping your RV clean on the inside is kind of tough, you know, because you're tracking dirt and grass and sand, in our case, in and out of your RV all the time. Well, we actually use a grass mat outside of our entry steps. We did this in our Class C RV for five years. These grass mats are terrific. I mean, they get your shoes nice and clean on the bottom. We don't really wear our shoes inside, but we at least walk in and then we take our shoes off immediately. And these grass mats are just perfect for that. We have one grass mat in our Class C. We bought another one for our Class A. We like it so much and we've been using them for over five years and they hold up really, really great. Now this year we also did a little add-on and we bought little step covers for each of our steps. And these have been terrific too, because once we clean our feet on the grass mat, now we have to cross over these as well. And it just keeps us even cleaner before we get into the RV and kick off our shoes right at the entryway. <clears throat> now, I also want to get into some of the more, I guess, technical items that we use on the outside of our RV that we also love. And the first thing is snap pads we've got snap pads underneath here on all four of our leveling jacks they were the very first thing we bought when we bought our class a rv and these are tremendous you know snap pads are great because you don't have to climb under your rig and put anything under your levelers during the leveling process they are on there they snap right into place and they stay on there all the time even while we're traveling down the road our snap pads stay on the bottom of our levelers it just makes life so much more convenient when we pull up to the campground, first thing we do is put the levelers down and then we can go ahead and put our slides out and get all set up. But with snap pads, everything is just so much more convenient. Now you're about to see something you've never seen before and that's inside one of the bays of our RV. Now this is my tool bay and I can tell Susan's nervous already that I'm gonna open this up and you're gonna see inside here, but it's not in that bad of shape. I keep it pretty all right. It's, it's pretty organized, it's not terrible right? It's not horrible. It's not horrible. <laughs> but the one thing I want to show you in here is my air compressor. Now, if you own any kind of RV that, you know, needs tires pumped up more than 60 PSI, it's really, really tough to find a gas station that has an air pump that's over 60 PSI. Ours need 110. So there's no way we can just pull into a regular gas station and inflate our tires if we need to. So I bought the Vi Air uh, air compressor for Class A RVs. Now, these come in different sizes. They make them for Class A RVs, Class B RVs, Class C RVs, and travel trailers and fifth wheels. So you can go online. Um, we got this from Techno RV, so I'll put a link to their website. But Eric and Tammy at Techno RV do a great job creating videos explaining all of this stuff so you buy the right thing the first time. Ours is tremendous. It inflates our tires quickly. It doesn't have to recycle for a long period of time. There are actually two hoses in here, so I can extend my hose reach uh, up to about 30 feet, which is really great. I can get all around the RV with no problem. And then the air compressor itself is really small. And I'll show you some of the accessories that I have with it as well. But the air compressor is just this big. That's all it is. And you set this baby on the ground. Now this connects to your battery. So I'll have to raise the hood in the front of my RV, connect this to the motor battery and then I can run my 30 feet of cord around to pump up all of my tires. Now, the air compressor is great, but it also serves many other purposes for us. Number one is that I sometimes have to make repairs inside the RV, and we made a video about how I've repaired all of our drawer bottoms throughout the entire RV to strengthen and bolster them so the bottoms don't fall out while we're driving down the road. <clears throat> I needed a nail gun to do all that. And my nail gun also connects to my air compressor. So if I have to make repairs to trim, cabinetry, drawers, anything wooden inside that I need nails to shoot, I'm all set. I have everything right here that I need. The other thing that I use this for is I bought a little 
air gun blow kit, air blow gun kit, <laughs> whatever you call it. And basically it's just a little handle. Psh, psh, psh. You can blow things off. Like we've had tons of dust inside of our storage bays. I blow them out. We had dust all over the engine of our Jeep one time. I blew all that off. You can blow the leaves off your patio, stuff like that. So an air blow gun works really, really great with your air compressor. And then the other thing that I bought, which I haven't used this yet, but it, it's available through Techno RV. And they have a winterization kit that fits to your air compressor so that instead of having to use RV antifreeze to winterize your RV, you can blow out all your lines with your air compressor and it has all the fittings for you to be able to connect to your plumbing system and do just that. So this has been a tremendous tool for us. And even though I haven't used the winterization kit yet, I know people that own this and they say it works great. So I'm happy to recommend it here in our video as well. We're not even gonna winterize our RV this winter. We're gonna leave it in Florida as we head home to Maryland for the holidays. And then we'll drive back down to Florida in at New Year's anyway. So, uh, but at some point I know I'll get a chance to use it. And again, we know plenty of people that have it and say that it works great. Now, I don't know how anybody can be a YouTuber without making a video and getting rained on a little bit, but we seem to make it happen all the time. So here we are in the rain, but talking about our favorite outdoor gear, <laughs> it's just spitting a little. Anyway, another one of our really favorite items is this bike cover. Now, you might have seen in some previous videos, we talked about our Thule bike rack and our electric bike, electric bikes that we have and um, they were on our class c rv and then we converted all that over to the a and there's a couple of tricks to that and one of them i know you've never seen before so we're happy to show you that in just a couple minutes but we had an old bike cover we bought one of the cheapy ones off of amazon i think it cost like 30 bucks and man one of the first times i used it it ripped and came apart and was just terrible so we bought this new bike cover this is by team obsidian We've had this thing for a couple of years. It's been on the back of RV for, gosh, thousands and thousands of miles it was, as we've driven all across the country. This thing's been everywhere and it's held up really well. Our bikes stay nice and dry. It doesn't rip, tear, fall apart, blow off. All I do is check it every now and then and make sure it's kind of staying in place and we are good to go. So this has been the best bike cover we've ever had and I recommend it all the time to our subscribers and now I'm recommending it to you as well. Now these last few items kind of all go together a little bit and I'll show you why as we go through this but you know one of the biggest game changers that we've ever experienced with camping was getting our Blue Ox tow bar when we got our Class A RV because it's allowed us to tow our Jeep behind us. We made a video all about the Blue Ox tow bar um, and so if you want to check that out, just click the gray box up top here. But basically, the Blue Ox has been fantastic. We've been able to tow our Jeep. It's super easy and fast to set up and get going on the road. We literally can set up our Jeep in less than 15 minutes, including the tow bar, the brake, checking all the lights and all that good stuff. And we are heading down the road. Now, when we first hooked up our Jeep to our Class A RV, we had to hook the Thule bike rack up to the back of the Jeep. And that's because when we first got our Class A, we just had a single hitch on the back that our, our Blue Ox connected to. Then we took the Thule bike rack, and this connects to a hitch as well. So we connected the Thule bike rack to the hitch on the back of our Jeep. Now, that's all fine, well, and good, but it creates a very big problem. And that is when these bikes are on the back of our Jeep, two things happen. One is we can't open the back door to the Jeep anymore. And number two, you can't see any of the lights on the back of the Jeep. So if we hit our brakes or we're using a turn signal, no one behind us could see that because the bikes are here and they have that big black cover over them. And that's it, man. It's a very dangerous situation. So we quick, quickly realized we can't do that. And so we found out about what this is called, and this is called a dual hitch receiver and this plugs into the main hitch in our rv and then this dual hitch receiver works in two ways first way is on the bottom that's where our blue ox tow bar attaches to it and on top that's where we plug the Thule bike rack into it now you might be wondering and if you and if these are too close by the way you can't make your blue ox tow bar hitch and so ours is a four inch difference. They make these dual hitch receivers 
in either two, four, six, eight, or 10 inch differences. And the main thing that you wanna do when you buy one of these is make sure your bottom hitch is in the right position so that your tow bar stays level when it connects to your tow vehicle. And I'll show you how this works. It's really simple. We just take the cover off, just lift it up and it swings right over. And now we can pull them out and connect them back here to our Jeep. And this allows us to store both our bikes on top of the hitch and tow our Jeep behind us. So it's really been a fantastic setup. It's one of the things I'm most happy about. Now I bought this from Roadmaster. It's rated at 10,000 pounds. And again, they make these in two, four, six, eight, or 10 inch spreads. So depending on how you need to set up your rig to make sure these tow bars are level from, from here to the front of your vehicle, that's what's most important. And then your totally just sits on top of that. And now you can ride down the road nice and safe without having any problems. These are just a few of our favorite outdoor gear items that we use that make our lives so much easier and so much more fun while we're on the road. But if you have some gear that you use that's your favorite, we would love to know about it. Put it in the comments down below. We'd love to hear from you. And we might learn about a new piece of gear we wanna pick up ourselves and give it a try to make our lives easier. So please share all that in the comments down below. And if you've liked this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you join on board. Susan and I put out new videos every single week and we'd love to see you guys in the comments every single week as well. But if you wanna check out some more of our how-to videos and how we do things and gear that we love, just click the box down below and Susan and I will see you in the next video.